Amen. Thank you, Steve. So did you catch that uh, scripture story? I thought it was, I thought the lectionary scripture lessons were so great for this Pentecost that I decided to do a sermon in three parts. So normally I know you all are petrified to come up with like a 20 page script and it's like, oh, how long is this sermon going to be? Well, this sermon has a lot of space for the spirit and it's going to be in three shorter sections. So will you pray with me, please? May the words of my mouth, meditations of all our hearts be filled and illuminated by your spirit, O oh Lord. Amen. So this morning we're going to talk about uh, the Holy Spirit, sort of like the ghost of Christmas past, present, and future, the Holy Spirit past, present, and future. So this is the past section. And I think it's important for us to remember that the Spirit of Christ, that we celebrate this Holy Spirit that was given on Pentecost, was also in the world as the wisdom of God from the very beginning. I think of the Holy Spirit as the immediate way that we experience God's love in the world. Something that we experience when we feel receptive or tuned to God's presence. I pulled out an old paper that I wrote. I, I think it was my uh, ordination paper. And I said, uh, read the Holy Spirit section. And I had three words for the Holy Spirit. Three verbs, actually. That the Holy Spirit renews, unites, and encourages us. And I really saw this throughout the scripture lessons this morning. So let's talk about Moses and the situation here when he was feeling a little bit overburdened with leading the people of Israel. In fact, I think they had just gone into the desert. They hadn't even been there that long. And already the people were complaining about the food. Yes. They were not happy with the manna, which is described in this uh in numbers a little earlier so i don't think we get that uh description about the manna but it was kind of like a white tasteless cake thing that came out of dew it, do it doesn't sound very appealing and apparently even though they were slaves back in egypt at least they had melons and meat and other variety of foods so it just kind of seems like moses cannot win and he's scratching his head what can i do and then he goes off to have a talk with God. I know a lot of us do this. I hope we do. When things get rough in life, you can always go have a talk with God. And this is what he says to God. Why have you brought this trouble on your servant? What have I done to displease you that you put the burden of all these people on me? And I love this. Did I conceive all these people? Did I give birth to them? <laughs> This is hard on moms because it sounds like we are the responsible party, but Moses did not give birth to these folks. Why do you tell me to carry them in my arms as a nurse carries an infant to the land you promised on an oath? Where can I get meat for these people? They keep wailing at me. Give us, give us some meat to eat. I cannot carry all these people by myself. The burden is too heavy for me. And then, get this. This is straight out of the Bible, I'm telling you. If this is how you're going to treat me, says Moses, please go ahead and kill me now. <laughs> but I'm sure we can all relate to situations in our lives where we come, we're like right on the edge. And it's like, if this is how it's going to be, I don't know. Moses cannot be responsible for all these people. But the good news in the scripture is he did not have to be. And I really like the sense of how caring God is here, how responsive, and just how practical the solution is. The response is, hey, what about shared leadership? How about we get some other elders, you know, some folks around that can help? And this starts to sound a bit like those of us who've been talking about the UCC, like, it's a bit like UCC polity. We have a lot of committees, we have shared leadership here, we have a kind of democratic system. And that 
means sometimes it takes longer to make decisions, but they are more collegial, they're more inclusive. We're all speaking. And it's interesting because, you know, when the, the guys who were still back at the camp that didn't come to the tent to get the spirit on them are prophesying and somebody tattletales to Moses and said, look, even these guys are, are trying to prophesy now. Moses says, great, have at it. I would like the more prophetic people, the better. So I think the lesson is when we try to carry it all in any kind of situation, we can't. We're not supposed to. That's not the point. And when we turn to the spirit, we can find renewal. Renewal, I like that word, because we all get to the edge sometimes with different situations in our lives. But this scripture speaks to us about the renewal that can happen in any situation. The Holy Spirit acts in ways that are unexpected. So we can't really imagine them. They will be surprises. They will be solutions that are beyond our imagination. So the Spirit was there with our Hebrew brethren in ancient days past. And the Spirit is not just for one person, it's for everyone. So let's listen now to the story of Pentecost as told in the book of Acts. And Ethan, we hear that story every Pentecost, but I'll never get tired of it. There's always something new to hear. There's so much that's miraculous. And I think for me this year, what I heard was the sort of miracle of communication. And what does it mean that they each heard in their own language? I feel like for one thing, it means that the spirit breaks down barriers, brings clarity, speaks in a voice that could be understood. And the spirit comes to diverse people, daughters, slaves, old men, as in Moses' time, this is a non-hierarchical spirit. Spirit that falls on diverse people. So how were the disciples able to hear the spirit? We know they were waiting. They had been told to wait. It was 10 days after the ascension. They were paying attention but it would have been hard to miss this dramatic entrance with fire and wind. And I think about the late Tina Turner coming on stage, the Holy Spirit entering the space, the breath of God asking, what's love got to do with it? And reminding us that love's got everything to do with it. So we can recognize that the Spirit comes to places that are open to the Spirit. And I think it's a good question to ask ourselves every now and then, how are we making space for the Spirit in our own lives? And how are we making space for it in this church? I remember last year on Pentecost, well, every Pentecost that we've had at this church so far has been kind of a monumental event. But this uh, last year, we were outside in a tent. It was kind of a hot day, some of you remember. And then we processed down to this kind of raw but open space here. The pews had been removed. And, and we invited the Spirit to dwell and live in this place. And I do believe the Spirit has been with us this past year at Pilgrim. And I'm so glad we had that service where we invited the Spirit here. Making space for the Spirit is important. The Spirit that renews and unites us, breaks down barriers, and encourages us. 
So where do you feel the spirit most in your life? I hope sometimes it's at church, but <laughs> for me, I have to say it's also in places of nature. The last couple of days I got to go to a place in North Carolina that I love where there is a lake that's like a thin place where you really can feel God's presence, where I can go and talk and, and receive really, and I value those kind of quiet times in nature. But I also find the spirit in dancing, in prayers while folding the laundry, <laughs> and being in this community. This, this is what the spirit came to do to build a church, a church that could carry on the work of Jesus in the world. That's what we are at Pilgrim. And one of the most wonderful things that I've experienced at Pilgrim in this last year has been the conversations that we've had, whether it's adult uh, Sunday school after church or Bible study, if you haven't been attending these things, it's just beautiful because people share in a way, I think someone used the word, and I think this is the correct, the, are so authentic with one another as a spiritual community, just trying to help each other find our way in this world together. It, it's just, it's something that, that would have been my dream for what a church could be. And I thank you all for bringing that gift to me and to all of us. So this is the spirit that unites us, that makes us one. Let's hear the next part of the scripture. Amen. Thank you for that reading. Linda and Karen, we are each bringers of the Spirit into the world in a variety of ways. I, I just love that scripture. It was also the, the motto of my college of variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of gifts in this room, in this space. Each one of you brings something different to this world, brings something different to this church. It's incredible to see. And I think the key is just to keep encouraging one another and not expect us to be the same because we're really not. We're not supposed to be. One of my favorite phrases from the Bible, I didn't know where it came from until I looked it up earlier this week, <laughs> but it's from Thessalonians, I think First Thessalonians, is don't quench the spirit. <laughs> don't quench the spirit encourage one another when someone has an idea or a thought or just listen bring it forward the rest of that that verse from Thessalonians is do not treat prophecies with contempt but test them all and hold on to what is good and I think that's almost like the part of our ch church's mission to be an open-minded church means we can be a place where we encourage one another and see what the Spirit brings. And when I think about our church's mission statement, I hear the voice of the Spirit as we create a community that is caring, inclusive, and open-minded, where each person can search for a vision of God and relate it to the modern world. They got it right, Vanessa? More or less, yes. On this day when we celebrate the birthday of the church, we recognize that the Spirit is here acting through us. We are, I love hearing the voices of the children. That's pretty cool too. <laughs> but we are God's hands and feet moving and making change in this world. And the Holy Spirit is encouraging us, energizing us, empowering us for good. When I think of the Holy Spirit, I think of love in action. The book of Acts echoes the book of Joel. Young men will dream dreams, old men will have vision, sons and daughters will prophesy. This whole idea, the spirit lands on each of us. So I want us to take a moment. You might have noticed the table here in the middle. But to think about what is a vision or dream you might have for this church? 
and we've got the clouds there. There are a few there already, but any time during the rest of the service that you feel moved to, or maybe it's right now, where you have some, some vision in your mind or uh, something that comes to you is like, yes, I could see this for us. Please take a moment to go forward and write it on a cloud, and we will have a place in the parlor where we can look at all of these visions together. And I think it's, it's, it's a moment to recognize that the Spirit is speaking through each one of us this morning. <laughs> 